Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, I decided I've had enough of these uh, sitting in the chair talking to the camera days. Too many of those in a row, so I just decided to get out and walk around a little and we'll do our vlog this way today. Sounds like a good change of pace, right? Alright, so it's Friday afternoon. I got home from my second week of work and we got it was kind of a short day again today not as short as it's been uh, in the last couple days but there were some kind of interesting changes that took place today um since this was the first day that we all came in and knew that you know we were on shutdown what they did is uh since there weren't actually any people who were really there wasn't really a whole department, uh, you know, here, so we didn't start off with a department meeting. So while I did arrive at 7 a.m. in the plant, um, when I went to the meeting room that we normally have our department meetings, there was just nothing going on there. So I just elected to go into the computer room and start reading SOPs again. Well, I got, uh, I don't know, two or two and a half or three hours into it. And I was about ready to take a break when I got a telephone call from my manager. And basically he wanted to know if I was even in the plant or if I had gone home already. And um, I said, no, I'm in the plant doing, you know, reading SOPs. And he was, he started reaching the conclusion that, you know, I had start, uh, started wandering about a little bit myself. And that is, what is the wisdom and the real benefit to reading these SOPs right now. I don't know these machines from from a hole in the wall. So, you know, reading that, okay, you go into this machine, you press F1 and F3 and then F9 and then S4 and then S12. It's like, I don't know what that means and I'm not gonna retain any of that. And, uh, cause you know, if I don't know what F1 is and F3 and F9 and whatever all these other buttons are or what they're doing, you know, I'm not going to remember that. And uh, he was kind of reaching the same conclusion. He kind of thought it was maybe uh, a, a waste of time for me to be reading SOPs at this point. So uh, he actually said, well, if you'd like, and you want to you know, get, get some hours and stuff like that, what you can do is they're actually working on one of the lines right now, doing some of the stuff that we can do. Remember I told you the... Uh, most of the work that's being done on the machines that were uh, that that are down right now is being done with uh, by people who come in from the manufacturer and are doing the work themselves. But there are some like custom jigs that we have to do our own work on because you know we built it, so we're responsible for it. And you remember yesterday I told you that I that I'd gotten a chance to like work a little bit with that and help take some of those jigs off the machine. Well, what needs to happen now is all of those jigs need to be washed and lubricated and uh, basically prepared so that when we get to the point where, you know, we're ready to have the machines put back up again, we can reinstall them and they'll be ready to go. Well, uh, my boss has said, you know, if you'd like, you can go in and uh, go onto the line and just help them do that. And, you know, they're working half days you know, we, you know, we usually work 12 hour days, so a half hour, a uh, half day in this case is about eight hours. And so, you know, that would be the, the hours would be what, seven to 3.30 with a half hour lunch. So I get home a little bit early and that's nice. And um, I think I'm gonna continue reading some SOPs because while a lot of the ones that are directly related to the job I'm doing, you know, aren't really beneficial at this point. There's a lot of just like corporate stuff that I have to do. You know, uh, I'm gonna take classes on sexual harassment. Apparently I don't know enough how to sexually harass people. So they gotta teach me how to do that and do it right, I guess. And you know, there's, you know, corporate things, you know, uh, ethical concerns and stuff like that. And that's all stuff that I can do uh, that doesn't require me to know a machine. So I think even though the people who are working the eight hour days working on the machines only work Monday through Friday. I think I am still gonna go in on Saturday, tomorrow, and just spend a couple hours, you know, trying to plug through all the all the corporate stuff that I need to know. You know, the stuff that isn't directly related to uh, the specifics of my job. 
I think that'll be a good benefit for me. Get that out of the way. Then when I do get to the point where I'm uh, ready to start doing real training in the uh, in the uh, machines I'm going to be working on, then I'll at least have that stuff out of the way. Now, I was actually invited, if I wanted to, to come back and work on Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and next week. Obviously, I can't do that because I'm going home to California on Sunday. But um, we'll kind of play it by ear. I, I kind of got the idea that maybe they have limited budget for having people come in during the shutdown. And they may not have room for me. Although the word I got on the streets today was, you know, they were very grateful to have me because they were apparently way behind and having just an extra body in there working basically got to the point where we caught up. So, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they can appeal to their boss to, you know, make a little extra money for me when I come back. But, like I said, I'll deal with that with uh, my boss uh, while I'm gone. I have his email address, I have his phone number, so we'll work that out and figure out exactly what they want to do. But, I just kind of wanted to share that, kind of what my strategy is for this point. Uh, like I said, still going home on Sunday. Looking forward to seeing all the, all the peeps here. Just got a telephone call a little bit ago from Beth telling me about Flash. Apparently, uh, Flash likes to wander around when it's raining. And it was raining last night. And I guess Beth put her in her box last night before she went to bed. And then got up in the morning and Flash was out walking around in the rain trying to figure out what to do. I think maybe we just got to admit, you know, help Beth know that, you know, Flash can kind of take care of herself. If she wants to go out and walk in the rain, you know what, she can go out and walk in the rain. Usually what I did is I kind of took approach with her that the only time I really cared where she slept is in the winter when she's hibernating. Beyond that, if she wants to sleep in the yard, she wants to sleep uh, in her summer home, she wants to just curl up in a corner somewhere, you know what, she's fine as, as long as she's safe. And, you know, if she chooses a place where the sprinklers are going off that night, you know, what she doesn't have to deal with that at the time. So, um, I think she's going to be fine. And Beth just uh, has, I think, maybe a little too much mommy in her and uh, wants, to, uh, wants to mother a, uh, a tortoise that's probably twice her age. So, whatever, you know, she can do that. Get, get a little of her mommy uh, influence in there and they'll be fine. So anyway, I think that's all that I have for today. Uh, thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.